you for joining me once again on the program, Your Doctor in COVID. I'm your host, I'm Dr. Mahendra Karpin, the Head of Medical Services and Cardiology at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. You know, we continue to speak about the COVID-19 pandemic as it rages across the world. Several places are experiencing dramatic surges in cases. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us a WhatsApp message to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. As usual, I'm starting off by wearing my mask to cover both my nose and my mouth, but I'll take it off so that we can continue our conversations and talk more about the COVID-19 pandemic and the way it has been affecting us all. There are many places around the world now that we can look towards for examples and lessons learned and how to change, modify, and strategize in better ways to combat this deadly pandemic. If we look at some place like India, there was an early success in their public health strategy. And unfortunately, some things would have changed. And right now, they are undergoing a significant and alarming sharp rise in cases, not just positive cases, but deaths as well from COVID-19. In fact, a day or two ago, they recorded the highest number of cases in a single day for any country since the start of the pandemic. If we look across now to the Middle East and we look at a country like Israel, what we see is that because of a dramatic and aggressive vaccination drive, these people who live in Israel are now able to come out in public spaces without wearing a mask. And I know yourself and myself, many of us, are looking forward to the day when we return to what we consider normal existence. That is being able to go out in the shops, the supermarkets, the places we hang out, um, churches, all these normal places in our workplace, etc. We look forward to the day when we can just go back to these places and of course follow simple guidelines but not having to do all of the dramatic and drastic changes that we've been asked to do and we have been doing during the COVID-19 pandemic. So imagine what it's like once again to live in a world where you no longer need to wear your mask because you have been vaccinated. And this is exactly what is happening in Israel right now. Because they have vaccinated so many of their adult population, people are now allowed to go back out in public without the requirement of wearing a mask once they can show and demonstrate proof that they have taken their vaccines. That's both doses. In Guyana, we have started an aggressive vaccination campaign. And as we speak now in the third week of April 2021, we have passed the vaccination point of 100,000 of our citizens receiving a first dose of vaccine. That's remarkable. And considering that we started just over a month ago, we are very lucky to have one, the resources, personnel, and others to be able to achieve this. But not only that, that we actually have the vaccines to be able to vaccinate 100,000 persons in our population. And the good news is that for all of those persons, there is already a second dose that is set aside for them. Regardless of what type of vaccine you would have taken, there is a second dose that is guaranteed to come to you whether it's the AstraZeneca vaccine, which I took, whether it's the Chinese Sinopharm or the Russian Sputnik, everyone has a guaranteed second dose in storage. 
hopefully as we get more and more into the vaccination program, we will see a sharper increase in the number of persons being willing to take the vaccines because there are several persons who have concerns about these vaccines. It's understandable because as more and more news becomes available to people, there are obviously some news that are false and people can become significantly alarmed when they see certain things. For example, the risk of blood clots, for example, in the AstraZeneca vaccine. We know that that risk is less than one in one million population. In Guyana, we don't have one million person. So it would be very, very unusual and outside of the statistical norm to see more than one person. Now, you have to weigh the risks versus benefits when making these decisions. Should we then not vaccinate people because there is a chance that one person in the entire country might develop this severe blood clot? And that's a, you know, not such a, a difficult question to answer. Unfortunately, if it does happen to that one person, you know, everyone around them will be affected as well emotionally and otherwise. But at the same time, we consider that 99% of the population would have received vaccines and are in a better place because they have received vaccines. We look forward to the time when we achieve what is called herd immunity. As it relates to vaccination, herd immunity means we have to vaccinate somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of our population. So therefore, if the virus comes in contact with persons, it is not going to have that tremendous, significant, severe impact on people where they need to be admitted to ICU, where they need to be on a ventilator or even dying. All of the vaccines, all of them that we have available in Guyana have been shown to be 100% effective in preventing severe COVID. That is, if you do get COVID, you will not end up in an ICU, you will not end up on a ventilator, and you will not end up dying. I want to clarify that the vaccines so far have not been shown to prevent you from getting infected with COVID. Let me be very clear. So far, they have not been shown to be 100% effective in preventing you from getting COVID. But what they have been effective in showing is that if you do get COVID, it will be a mild form of COVID. It will not be severe and you will not end up in the hospital, in the ICU, on a ventilator or end up dying. And that's an important benefit to recognize that these vaccines bring to us. If you compare that, what happens to unvaccinated people when they do get COVID, of course, there is a significant number of them, about 5% of pos positive COVID-19 patients actually end up in hospital. And 2% of those end up in an ICU. So if you compare that, 2% of a large number, let's say a million people, you're looking about 2,000 people that are going to be, you know, severely affected one way or the other. So we have to be able to manage our risks, manage our benefits, etc., to see what is best for us as a population. So for me, and my opinion still holds that vaccination provides a reliable and safe way for us to beat this pandemic and return to some level of normalcy. I must tell you that in all of medicine, there is really nothing, not just in medicine, but more so in life in general, there is no 100% guarantee. Even simple medications that we take on a daily basis. You might go to the pharmacy and take cough syrup, for example, or aspirin. Everything has potential side effects. Nothing is 
completely 100% safe. And so we as individuals and we as healthcare professionals have to all the time balance the risks versus the benefits to figure out and to make a determination and a decision whether or not the action you're about to take, if the benefits outweigh the risks or the risks outweigh the benefit. As it relates to the COVID-19 vaccines that are available, the benefits far, far outweigh the risks in almost all of the studied population. And one of the population that is being studied right now is the pregnant population. We don't have a completed study yet, but so far we have some encouraging results. And there are a couple of salient points to note about COVID-19 vaccine and pregnancy in particular. So the most important things to know about it is that the vaccine cannot give you COVID-19 infection if you are pregnant or anyone at all for that matter, pregnant or not. The vaccine cannot give you the infection because the vaccines have no live virus. None of the vaccines that are available to us have any live viral particles and therefore you cannot get COVID infection from getting the vaccine. They do not contain any ingredients that are known to be harmful to pregnant women or to the fetus. So usually the active part of the vaccines or any medicines are combined with inactive parts in order to be delivered to people safely. What we know about all of the parts that are involved in the production of this vaccine, none of them are known to be harmful to mother or child. Most vaccines that we have had so far in the world, all kinds of vaccines, are routinely done in pregnancy and are known to be safe. These include things like tetanus, diphtheria, and the flu shots. In many places, actually, the flu shots are annual and people have to take them every year whenever it's flu season. A lot of times this happens in the North American and the colder countries. It happens around um, the fall and the winter time as well. Like everything else, there are some side effects that are associated with vaccination in the COVID-19 era. And although there are no real serious side effects that are seen in large numbers, many people have reported some smaller side effects. And these include things like pain at the injection site. In our case, we usually give the vaccine either on the right or left shoulder. And I myself, when I took my vaccine, did have some tenderness and pain at the area, especially the day after. But it was managed quite easily using Panadol and fluids. Some people have reported fatigue. Some people have reported headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, and up to 15% of people would experience some fever. I don't recall getting any fever, but I certainly recall feeling very cold and having chills the night when I took the vaccine. I took it around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, and sometime around 8, 9 o'clock as well, I started feeling chilly. About 1% of people would actually have a high fever. And a persistent high fever during the first trimester of pregnancy might lead to some complication. Not every fever, but if the fever is high and it stays high for a long time, that is when you may have complications in the first trimester of pregnancy. The safe medication that can be used for high fever, of course, is Tylenol or acetaminophen, paracetamol, whatever brand name we have, it's really the same ingredients. 
and that is what is safe and recommended for use in pregnancy if you have a fever, particularly after the injection of the COVID-19 vaccine. So I hope we would have learned a little bit about COVID in the world as well as how to beat it and the vaccination process in Guyana as well as around the world, the side effects, the concerns, the risks, the benefits, etc. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send a WhatsApp to 620-6275 or send an email to docandcovid at gmail.com. Thank you once again for joining me and I see you next time. Thank you.